train ride, he says, from New York City, which is exactly where he was in 1969 when astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon. I was at a baseball game at Yankee Stadium in New York when we actually physically landed on the moon. And they interrupted the game and uh, made an announcement that we landed on the moon and everybody went crazy at the stadium and everybody stood up and, uh, and sang uh, God Bless America and it, it was pretty special. But some years later, a more personal experience with history during his freshman year at Purdue University had an even greater impact on him. And I got to meet Gene Cernan at the university doing a little social at one of the common areas of my dormitory. And that really got me thinking about a path and got me thinking about Air Force ROTC and becoming a pilot and a fighter pilot and a test pilot. Polanski graduated in just over four years with a bachelor's degree in aeronautical and astronautical engineering and a master's degree in aeronautics and astronautics. He then joined the Air Force, eventually becoming an aggressor pilot, an aircraft tactical instructor, and a test pilot. In 1992, he left the military for a job as an aerospace engineer and research pilot at NASA. Selected as an astronaut in 1996, Polanski is excited about the work NASA is doing. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm biased. I'm, I'm, I work for NASA. I'm an astronaut, but I remarkably... In kind of think that, you know, NASA's a pretty darn cool place and we do pretty amazing things. I think that we've been in low Earth orbit long enough. And so I'm really excited to be a part of this process that gets us out of here and gets us to more human exploration. Doug Hurley, the crew's pilot, is making his first space flight. Born in the upstate New York town of Endicott, but raised in nearby Appalachian, Hurley became interested in space by watching Saturday morning TV. Sometimes in between the cartoons, there would, they would show these little clips of the Skylab missions and these guys running around in circles inside Skylab. And, that, you know, as a, as a young kid, obviously think, wow, that would be pretty neat to get a chance to do. So I think it kind of planted the seeds for me. After high school, Hurley received a Navy ROTC scholarship to study civil engineering at Tulane University. After earning his degree in 1988, he joined the U.S. Marines as a second lieutenant, eventually becoming a naval aviator in 1991. Hurley has served in the Western Pacific as a fighter pilot, been a weapons and tactics instructor, and is the first Marine ever to fly the FA-18EF Super Hornet. In July 2000, Hurley was camping with his father in Canada when he got an unexpected voicemail from NASA's chief astronaut. So I called the number that he left with the satellite phone, uh, you know, and got a hold of uh, him and... Uh, he said, hey, do you want to come work for us? And, of course, uh, you know, what you can't say no to something like that. Uh, and it was just an incredible experience to be out in the wilderness with my dad. Uh, it was probably one of the more special moments in my life and something I'll never forget. Mission specialist Chris Cassidy is one of four spacewalkers on the crew. The 39-year-old from York, Maine, says although he wasn't around during the Apollo era, it still left an impact on him. I've always been fascinated with uh, with space and technology and and, the, and just the fact that in in ten years we were able to go from from zero to the moon um, has always fascinated me. After high school, Cassidy went to the Naval Academy Prep School. He then attended the U.S. Naval Academy, where he earned a bachelor's degree in math. From there, Cassidy completed training to become a member of the U.S. Navy's Special Operations Forces, known as the Navy SEALs. Once I got in the Navy and the SEAL teams, I learned about another SEAL, Bill Shepard, who was an astronaut, and I, I, my career track was kind of paralleling his, so I thought, well, shoot, I can certainly uh, give it a try as well. So that's what I did. So he enrolled in grad school at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, graduating in 2000 with a Master of Science in Ocean Engineering. He then applied to NASA and was selected as an astronaut in 2004. STS-127 is Cassidy's first trip to space, but he hopes it won't be his last. I think I'm uh, in a fortunate position as a, as a new astronaut to be part of a shuttle crew now and maybe a space station crew in my mid-career and, and at the tail end of my career, hopefully uh, um, uh, an exploration mission to the, to the moon. So it's very exciting for me personally. This is the second space flight for mission specialist Julie Payette of the Canadian Space Agency. 
In 1999, she flew on STS-96, which performed the first space shuttle docking to the International Space Station. The native of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, says when she was young, the excitement created by the Apollo moon missions convinced her that she wanted to be an astronaut, even though there was no such thing at that time in Canada. But it didn't matter. And that was the power of exploration, of, of doing something beyond our reach, of, of pushing the envelope, is the fact that when we do something like that as human beings, it impacts a whole generation of kids that want to do the same. When Canada selected its first six astronauts in 1983, Payette was a second-year electrical engineering student at Montreal's McGill University. After earning her degree, she worked as a computer systems and research engineer. She also earned a master's degree in computer engineering from the University of Toronto. Then in 1992, when she learned Canada was looking for candidates for its second group of astronauts, Payette initially wondered how her credentials would measure up to those of the other 5,000 plus applicants. You know, I'm a strong believer in statistics. If I do apply, I have a chance. If I don't, I have a 100% chance of not being picked. So I applied and lo and behold, now I'm extraordinarily proud to be a crew member on STS-127, 2J, and, and going to space again for a second time with such a great team. Hang on, we got to do two. Tom Marshburn is a spacewalker and one of two medical doctors on the crew. Born in Statesville, North Carolina, he later moved to Atlanta, Georgia. Marshburn says learning about the early space missions as a youngster sparked his interest in pursuing a space-related career. It was a little bit late in high school, and I thought, boy, I'd love to work for NASA. I'd love to, to build rockets. That's what I wanted to do, build spaceships. Um, then I, I knew I needed to be good in math and science, uh, engineering in particular. So the graduate of Atlanta's Henderson High School went on to earn a physics degree from Davidson College in 1982 and a master's degree in engineering physics from the University of Virginia in 1984. But then he discovered he loved medicine. So he enrolled in med school at Wake Forest University. I uh, did my residency in Ohio, went to medical school in North Carolina, but I really had cut my teeth in medicine, I'd say, in Ohio. A wonderful place to train because uh, I was part of, one of the reasons why I went to residency there is because I could be a life flight physician as a resident. Marshburn was an emergency physician in Seattle, Washington, when he was accepted to a NASA program designed to introduce outside doctors to aerospace medicine. In 1994, he became a NASA flight surgeon and was selected as an astronaut in May 2004. STS-127 is Marshburn's first space flight. Dr. Dave Wolf, the chief spacewalker of NASA's astronaut office, has flown on three previous space shuttle missions. STS-58 in 1993, STS-86 in 1997, and STS-112 in 2002. The native of Indianapolis, Indiana says, as a kid, he was motivated by the early accomplishments of America's space program. I saw Ed White do the first U.S. spacewalk from a Gemini capsule, and I said, uh, I know I could do that. Uh, and it made me work harder in school. It gave me a vision. Uh, it inspired me just as it did everybody else. After high school, Wolf attended Purdue University, graduating in 1978 with a degree in electrical engineering. Then he decided to follow in his father's footsteps. I remember when my father went to medical school. He did it rather late in his life. I used to actually help him uh, study, and that inspired me to go into medicine. I studied medicine uh, and did an internship and eventually aerospace medicine in the Air Force Air National Guard as a flight surgeon and uh, ended up applying this as a bioengineer at NASA to biomedical research projects. Selected as an astronaut in January 1990, Wolf also has a long-duration space mission to his credit. After saying goodbye to the STS-86 crew in October 1997, he spent 128 days as a crew member on board the Russian Mir space station. It's a very interesting space to go to in your mind where you now live in space and zero gravity is your normal environment. And the unusual abnormal environment is where things fall and you have to and you're restricted to the floor. So uh, I really enjoyed uh, kind of cutting the cord to Earth and living on a spacecraft. U.S. Army Colonel Tim Copra swaps places with the Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata as a crew member on board the International Space Station. 
Coper was born and raised in Austin, Texas, and like most other six-year-olds who saw Neil Armstrong walk on the moon, he wanted to be an astronaut. I think I was uh, even more enthused by that because I had a, an older brother who was a complete space nut. He built all the models. We stayed up late together 